I'm Karan, or Karan Singh Magic, and I'd like to, this is my seventh TED, uh, so I'd like to remind all of you that you're in very safe hands. I've been doing magic now for money and sex, uh, generally. Uh, but if I have to be very, very honest, what I have to talk to you about today is my life story. And my life story for me begins with my first memory. I don't remember anything of my life till before I was three years old, which I think is the truth for all of you. I was born in Bombay. My family moved to Delhi when I was three. Uh, I have an elder brother. He used to go to school. Uh, I was three, so I didn't really have uh, long school hours. I just had nursery prep, so my school was over by 8 o'clock, 11.30. So I used to spend the day with my grandparents, my dada and my dadi. And my grandfather saying a particular thing to me is my first memory. And I've literally based my entire life on that. He'd come from Pakistan. I'm Sikh. Uh, so he had a mixture of Urdu and Punjabi that he spoke in. I was three years old. My grandfather looked at me and he said, Putter, zindagi mein kaam karo, to aisa karo, ki kaam ko khushi ho ki tumne usse kiya. If you do something, do it so well that the work is happy that you did it. And that's what I've based my life on. That's everything that I've done throughout my life. I started doing magic and I realized that I can follow that quote as much as I want. I can follow his ideologies as much as I want. But there is a side to me, which is a side to every human being, personality traits. Those will come in, no matter how hard you try. One of the personality traits I have is that I love attention. I'm an attention-seeking, self-obsessed, self-involved snob. And I love it, genuinely, I love it when I get attention. I love it if I'm walking on the street and somebody recognizes me. I love it from every now and then if somebody wants a picture. I worked very hard for the last six, seven years. I worked about 17, 18 hours every day. And I love the fact when I get that attention. But that's true for all of you as well. All of you here love the attention. Maybe you don't like being in the spotlight, but you love some sort of attention. Attention from your friends, from your family, from your loved ones, from your boyfriends, girlfriends, some of you from your teachers, perhaps. All of you love some sort of attention. I just love the attention from my peer group, and I love being in the spotlight. But as they say, no matter how hard you want one particular thing, that's the only thing you'll never, ever, ever, ever get. I was in school, uh, 11, 12 years old, and I did everything I could to get the attention. I was that kid from, that, from every school who's hated. I sat in a corner while the entire class, when they were 11, 12, and their hormones were developing, they started playing Truth and Dare, which I'm sure all of you have. I sat in a corner while my entire class played Truth and Dare, and that sort of bottle spinned, and the first question asked was, who do you have a crush on? In a poetically sort of cheesy kind of way, my first crush was attention. I loved the attention. I realized all the sporty kids are getting the attention, so I started playing football. I had this ludicrous dream that I wanted to play football for India. Three months later, I realized that I can't even play football for my school. <laughs> and I broke my back once playing football, so I realized that even if I wanted to play football, I can't. Then I realized all the kids who are into music are getting attention. So I started playing instruments. I played the guitar, the keyboard, the harmonium, the flute. I still play about seven, eight instruments, none of them well. Because I realized if you want real attention, you have to play the drums or the guitar. And I was playing the flute. <clears throat> So I realized that's a lost cause. <clears throat> what I started doing then was I started listening to my parents for a change. They sent me to a summer camp when I was 12 years old, and I met a man there named Shabuddin Khan, who changed my life. He is one of India's most celebrated street magicians. Only if you're a magician would you have heard of him. But he is fantastic. He taught me three tricks, just three tricks. And that changed my life. I've been hooked onto magic ever since every single day. That's the first thing I think of when I wake up. That's the last thing I think of before I go to bed, if I go to bed. And that has literally changed my life. With the attention, when I started performing for people, I realized that the only, the best way I could get attention back then was to figure out when somebody is lying. Look at them straight up, ask them to say a few things to me. One of them has to be a lie, and I figure out when they're lying. And I'd like to show that to you now. Uh, so there in the third row, giving the death stare. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry? Just Karan. Just Karan. Yeah. OK, I'm just Karan. <laughs> Karan, can you walk up on stage? We'll give him a round of applause as he's walking up. <laughs> do, you, do you play cards at all? Yeah. Yes? OK, you'll have to come very close to my chest to speak so that we can record this as well from right. this moment forth. We'll try this. Uh, I have a deck of cards with me. The moment you see a magician with a deck of cards, 
your first thought is that it's some sort of trick deck. Confirm for everyone that it looks like a normal deck of cards. Yeah, yes? they do. I'll show everyone as well. For people close to the front would be able to see. And here's what we'll do. I'll give them a quick shuffle so that neither you nor me knows which card ends up where. And it's your job, just current to lie to me. Right? We'll try this. As I go down, just say stop. stop. Take that card. Look at it. Remember it. Don't show anybody else. You look at it. Remember it. Put it back in your pocket when you're done. If you don't have a pocket, improvise. <laughs> we'll try this. <laughs> Put the card in your pocket. Uh, look at them. Don't look at me. Do you think you're a good liar? Yeah. Okay. An average human being, an average human being tells four lies a day. That's about 1,400 lies in a year, 87,600 lies by the time you're 60 years old. And the most common lie in the world I hear you say is, I'm fine. The most common lie I hear you say is, thank you, two people say it. Uh, <laughs> we try this, you think you're a good liar. If I think that you lie very convincingly, I'll give you money. Huh? In fact, I'll give you 500 rupees. Or <laughs> Paper, as we call it in India these days. Let's try this. I'll ask you a few questions. Be as honest as you can. Look at them. What's your full name? Jaskaran Singh Saini. And which phone do you use, Mr. Jaskaran Singh Saini? Uh, Samsung J7. Okay, get a new phone. And where, <laughs> where, uh, where, before it blows up on you, where do you live? Uh, currently in SNU. No, I mean, duh, but you won't plan to stay here for the rest of your life. Where's your family from? Uh, my family lives in Jamshedpur. Jamshedpur, excellent. The reason I'm asking these questions is to develop what you call a baseline. Now I know what Jaskaran looks like when he's telling the truth. So if he lies, his basic expressions will change, and I'll try and figure out when he's lying and when he's telling the truth. Now, Jaskaran, I'll ask you questions about your card. It'll be simple yes or no questions or multiple choice questions, and be as straightforward as you can. You can lie if you want. You can tell the truth if you want. Yes. Make sense? Yeah, you're giving sort of a blank expression. Look at them. Uh, so what's the color of your card, black or red? Black. See how he came right out and said it. I asked him what's the color of your card, black or red, he said black. He didn't really have to think about it. The only time when you have to think about something is when you're lying, because you have to prepare the lie. He didn't think this time, so I'm guessing that's the truth, and it is a black card, yes? yes. Excellent. So is it a club or a spade? Uh... <laughs> In the future, if you could lie slightly better, that would be a must. <laughs> One more time, is it a club or a spade? It's a spade. It's a spade. Okay, now I just pointed out that in the future, if you could lie slightly better, that would be more fun. He said, it's a, and we all knew that he was going to lie. Now he's trying to catch all of us out by telling the truth. So I'm guessing that's the truth, and it is a spade, yes? yes. Excellent. Look at them. <laughs> is it a number card or a picture card? It's a picture card. See how he nodded this time? He said, it's a picture card, and he nodded. I'm guessing you'll only nod when you're telling the truth. You won't nod unless you're lying unless you're a pathological liar, which I don't really categorize you as. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing you, you are telling the truth again, and it is a picture card. Yes. Can you say Jack, Queen, King out loud for me? Jack, Queen, King. OK, now say King, Queen, Jack. King, Queen, Jack. Say 11, 12, 13. 11, 12, 13. Look at them. Say 11, 12, 13. 13, 12, 11. 13, 12, 11. OK, this is a guess. Just Karan, you fumbled on the 11, so it's definitely not a Jack. Uh, keep looking at them. It's a guess. King of Spades. Excellent, we'll give Just Karan a round of applause. I'll take the King of Spades from you. King of Spades it is. I'll send you back, Just Karan. Thank you. That, that was the first trick that got me attention. Genuinely, that's one of the first tricks. I, whatever I'm showing you today is my first three ever tricks which Ishabuddin Khan taught me. They've been developed over the last 14 years, and they've come to this. Once I got the attention, I realized that you have to be more mature. I grew old, I started speaking to more people around me, and I realized that attention is a very sort of childish concept. I still love the, I love the attention still. I feel I'm still a child, I'm just 24, so I'm not really that much older than most of you here. But after the attention, what I really liked was the idea that all of you right now were in one way or the other entertained. Entertainment is the second most important thing to me in my life. And there is a particular way I do it. I'll try something with all of you. Let's try this. Put your hand on your head. Genuinely do this. All of you put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your chest. And put your hand on your wrist. Now that's your elbow, not your wrist. Right? For most people who kept it on their elbow, you were just copying what I was doing. And you were influenced by a few things that I was doing. I have a story about this. When I realized that I want to entertain people, I realized with the entertainment comes an idea of the greater good. 
I wanted to try something which I can do for greater good while trying out a few things on my own. Because if I'm on stage, I have to be perfect. So when I'm off stage, I try these little experiments to see what all I can do. About two and a half, three years ago, uh, at 1.32 a.m. in the night, I'm driving back from a show, I'm going home, and I'm caught by a police checkpoint, which is very normal for that time of the night. I hadn't had anything to drink. Uh, I wasn't speeding. I was not breaking any law to my knowledge. Uh, I drove up there. I opened my window. That guy started talking to me. And he looked at me, and I have this sort of look with open hair and a beard, which is probably not the most sort of ideal look for a parent in India. A cop looked at me, he's like, Kahan se are you? I'm like, sir, I'm show karke aa raho, which he took to be that I'm a stripper. <laughs> and he looked at me, he said, Kaisa show? And I tried to explain it to him. He said, Thik hai, bhoat late ho gaya, panso rupay de do. I said, sir, I law nahi toda. He's like, nahi, aapne ye kara hai, wo kara hai. He tried to sort of talk his way into giving, me, giving him money. I said, okay, I thought, okay, this is a good time to try something that I've been trying on influencing people. So I said, okay, yes, sir, uh, and I started doing my little act. I said, uh, I'll, I'll say it in English. I usually say it in Hindi, but since some of you are, uh, probably don't understand English, I'll say it in English. I said, uh, I probably don't understand Hindi, sorry. I looked at the cop and I said, sir, uh, I just have 500 rupees, and I meant to have dinner from 24-7. Uh, so I'll give you 500. Can you give me 200 rupees back? Uh, I'll use it for my dinner. He said, okay. And I'd come up with this idea that if I look at any of you right now and I start talking to you, this is making sense to you, right? I do that, I'm nodding, and a few of you close to the front start nodding with me. So I use this concept, because people tend to nod when you nod at people. I took out a 100 rupee note, not 500, I took out a 100 rupee note, I folded it, I looked at him dead in the eye and I said, ye lo panso. He took it, he kept it in his pocket and he gave me 200 rupees back. <laughs> in the middle of the night, I took 100 rupees from a cop. <laughs> Fuck you, corruption. <laughs> I came up <clears throat> and I use that idea now to influence all of you. That story was designed to influence all of you. It is a true story, but it was designed to influence all of you. There is a playing card in my pocket and all of you are going to tell me which card it is. Uh, Ma'am, looking at her phone, uh, there's a deck of cards in my pocket, so there are black cards and red cards. I take out one color. Which color do I take out? Red. red. Okay. Uh, so there. Uh, so the reds have hearts and diamonds. I hold hearts in one hand, diamonds in one hand. Reach over and take one suit. Which suit do you take? Diamond. Diamonds. So the hearts still remain in my hand. Uh, sir, uh, there are number cards and picture cards. I throw one set in the air. Which set do I throw? Number. number. So the pictures still remain. The pictures have Jack, Queen, and King. I have the Jack, Queen, and King face up on a table. I turn two of them face down. Which ones do I turn face down? Queen, queen and? Two of them face down. Queen and? King. So the Jack remains. The Jack of hearts. That was designed to influence all of you. All of you had a free choice and you ended up with the jack of hearts. Magicians do this trick where a card ends up in somebody's pocket. I want to show that to you. Usually it's this pocket here. Have you wondered whether, ever wondered what this tiny pocket is for? Pocket change. I use it to keep a single folded up playing card, which is the jack of hearts. With all of you just came up with. <laughs> Once I had the idea of uh, attention, of figuring out when someone is lying, I got the idea of entertainment along as well. And then I grew even older, I started doing more shows. All of that was important to me. But one more thing, which is probably the most important thing in the world, became the most important thing. Happiness. Simple as that. I want to be happy with what I'm doing. I want to entertain people. Uh, I want the attention. But I want to be happy more than anything else. And internal happiness is a trivial concept. I want to tell you a story that uses all three. On the 30th of October, Diwali day, two weeks ago, uh, I was invited to Amir Khan's house for the Diwali party, and I was performing there. Uh, I've met Amir and Shah Rukh before, and I was performing for uh, one of Shah Rukh's older movies, and I'm performing for Dangal's launch as well. Uh, and now that the cheap promotion is done, uh, I was at that party, and all of them, what they needed was to beat me at poker by the end of it. It's 3.30 at night, I'm sitting at a card table with Amir Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, Kunal Kohli, Sachin Tendulkar, and three other people. And I'm sitting there, and my idea was that I want eternal happiness. At the same time, I want the attention, and I want to entertain them. A hand came along. They're playing stakes, which I can't afford, by the way. They're playing really high stakes, and I realized, okay, might as well try it. It's just one night's earning for that show. So I started playing, and halfway through, I realized, okay, time to turn it on. 
One hand came where I had nine high. For those of you who play poker, the flop turn in river were out there. I had nine high. Shah Rukh Khan, Javed Akhtar, uh, Amir and me were left in the hand. Shah Rukh bet, Javed Saab folded. I had nine high. And at this point of time, I felt I knew how everyone's playing. I put like 21,000 rupees in the pot with nine high. Amir folded, Shah Rukh folded. I won the pot with nine high. I took my cards there. I looked at Amir. I said, I know you had a pair of jacks. I looked at Shah Rukh. I said, I know you had a pair of threes. And I knew you were going to fold when, uh, when I put 21,000 because I had nine high. I turned over my cards and Amir and Shah Rukh said something which I'm probably not allowed to say here. And I was escorted out of the party after that. <laughs> But that gave me happiness, that gave me the attention, that gave, that did entertain them because obviously I am invited to another show. Later in life, as all of that has developed, it has come to me that whatever you do, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you could be doing magic, you could be playing an instrument, you could be singing, you could be an actor, you could be a politician, you could be an economist, you could be far more qualified as all of the speakers, except for me, are. They actually have degrees and things. I dropped out of college. Uh, I don't have a college degree, I'm just a 12th pass. But all I've done is done what I wanted. I wanted to entertain people, I wanted attention, and I wanted happiness. And all I've done is followed the only advice that I've ever gotten in my life from my grandfather. I was three years old, he looked at me, and that's the only thing I always have remembered. So much so that's the only thing that's emotional to me, I can't even look at all of you while I'm saying it. And it's always been there for me. And for me, life, whatever I've done, has come down to this. It's all jumbled up, it's a Rubik's Cube, it's all jumbled up, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. But only if you have that solid, solid, solitary piece of advice, your self-belief, whatever you want to do, life does make sense. Life always makes sense. Calm karo, to aisa karo, ki kaam ko khushi ho ke tumne ose kiya. I'm Garan Singh Magic, you've been a brilliant audience. Thank you so much. <laughs>